crazy. What's my favorite of 2020? Uh, 2021. Wait, no, 2019. What year are we talking about? I mean, the mystery was eh, and the resolution was eh. Those two were dancing, and my blood was hot, okay? That's all I gotta say. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Franny and this is the first time that I sit down to film in 2021. I know, I know, thank you. It's been a while, you can totally skip a few minutes ahead if you're not interested in the personal catching up part of this video, but for those who want to stay, I'll be very quick because let's just get this over with. The past few months have been Bonkers. I've been crazy busy with work and studying. Both of those things are supposed to be part time, but they're actually kind of both full time, which is making me go insane. And my mental health has been kind of on the low, but recently it kind of has been getting better. Maybe. I don't want to jinx it, but I want to take advantage of the momentaneous state of slightly more relaxation and film a few videos, tell you guys about what I've been reading that's gonna happen in the next few videos. But for this video, I would like to very quickly, and I stress the very quickly part, go through all the books that I read in 2020, give you like just a few, I don't know, keywords or something for each title, as well as the star rating. I don't think I'll be doing a best books I read in 2020 video because I don't remember all the books that I read in 2020 in detail and it would suck to make a favorite videos list if I don't remember all the details and stuff and have a terrible memory so that's not gonna happen and I mean I think you can really tell from the star rating if those books were among my favorites of 2020 and save me some work. <laughs> this intro was already too long so I would say let's start and see what I read in 2020. First up we have an Italian graphic novel that has been translated from French so the original title would be Le Noël de Marguerite I don't know how to speak French as you guys can probably tell by that by India Desjardins this is about an old lady who is spending the Christmas day alone and then something happens and she doesn't spend it alone anymore very interesting synopsis. I give this three stars, it was very nice. Next, I finished listening to the audiobook of The Mystic School of Music Craft by Jessica Corey. This was a great audiobook, I think I talked about it in one of the past videos. I don't remember which one, but it's a middle grade, it's about music, you have an orchestra playing in the background in certain parts of the audiobook, which made it so incredible and so worth listening to the audiobook, so that's what I obviously recommend. I gave it four stars. It was like a five star for the audiobook part, three stars for the story, four stars was the average. Then I read a bunch of books for my thesis because I graduated in April of last year during the lockdown, yes. I won't tell you the titles because they're more academic and they're in Italian, but if you're interested, just go to my Goodreads page, whatever, let's be friends, and you can go through the books that I read in 2020 and go see the titles that I read for my thesis. So, next up was in April, I think, and it's Relish, My Life in the Kitchen by Lucy Nicely. This is a memoir slash graphic novel about Lucy Nicely and her relationship with food mainly and with cooking throughout her life from her childhood and I absolutely adored it. It was adorable, it was delicious, five stars. Then The King of Crows by Lee Barduc Lee Bardugo. It's the crows thing. I listened to the audiobook of The King of Crows by Liba Bray. This is the fourth book in the Diviner series and it was a huge disappointment. I loved the Diviner series, I loved all of the audiobooks. The narrator, Jean-Marie Lavoie, is just chef's kiss. But this book was terrible. And it's not, of course, the narrator's voice that made it terrible. It's the story. It was too long, too confusing. I think that Liba Bray didn't know herself how to wrap up everything and she kind of made a mess. That's my personal opinion, but I didn't like it and I gave it two stars. Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is the YA book that pretends to be a literary fiction book because it has more trauma and it's a bit more explicit about certain things, but it's a YA book. Anyway, I kind of liked it. In the end, it left me like, eh whatever. 
but it was kind of well written. I give it 3.5 stars. This is a story about the relationship between a guy and a girl. Of course, I don't remember the names, but basically they're best friends, but there's a huge difference in their social status because she's rich and he's poor. They kind of get together in high school and then they break up or not really, and then they keep being in touch and they kind of have this on and on thing throughout college and then the story keeps going, of course, I'm not giving you any spoilers, but it was meh. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third book in the Truly Devious series. It is a YA mystery series about a girl who is fascinated with true crime and podcasts and books, mystery books, and she wants to be a detective, and she gets in in this elite boarding school that is supposed to be very peculiar and shit. Of course, murders happen, there is a storyline in the present, there is very well interwoven with a storyline in the past. I really like the series, um, there were some things that let me a bit down, like the whole description of the school and the subjects, it was like, it's supposed to be this whole huge, you know, original, incredible thing for very prestigious kids, but in the end it's like, yeah, it's just a boarding school like all the others. I mean, that's the impression that I got. But the murders and the mystery aspect was actually very interesting. There was LGBT representation. There's a fourth book coming out this year. It's kind of a standalone because it's on its own and it takes place a few years after this trilogy, but the main character is the same. So I don't know how you guys would consider that, but anyway, another book is coming out with the same protagonist. I don't remember her name, but whatever. Then I read You Bring the Distant Near by Middley Perkins. This was a YA book featuring different generations of Indian women. I think we follow the mother, then the daughter, then maybe a cousin? I liked the story when I was listening to it, it's definitely a character-driven story, there was not much in terms of plot, but I, I mean, I don't know, I remember enjoying it, but I can't remember anything basically about the book, so I had given it four stars, I'm thinking about lowering it to three stars, because if I can't remember anything at all, at least that's what I think, otherwise I would remember more. Then I read This Spell Can't Last, by Isabel Sterling. This was a novella in the This Witches Don't Burn series. I really, really enjoyed this novella so, so much. This is a prequel because it takes place before what happens in the first book of the series, which is, of course, These Witches Don't Burn. It shows us what happened when and the reason why Hannah, the main protagonist of the series, and Veronica, her ex-girlfriend, break up and thank god that they did because then Hannah met Morgan and I love Morgan to pieces, I ship those two so much and also Veronica was kind of controlling and abusive and it wasn't a healthy relationship so I'm very happy that they broke up and I think I give it four stars. Then I read My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness by Kabina Gata. This is a memoir in a graphic novel format which is my favorite combination of all time. I know it's a very niche thing but I love it. It's Kabina Gata's story of how she found out that she was lesbian and how it was for her to be with a woman for the first time. It also goes through her past, which is full of trauma. So many trigger warnings for this book, but I absolutely loved it. And I still have to read the second volume, which is Letters to Myself or something like that. So I, I need to get on that one. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Curse by Michael Osto. This is supposed to be, this was supposed to be, I don't know. It's basically the prequel to the Nancy Drew TV show. I still haven't watched the TV show. I want to, but I still haven't. It was okay. I mean, the mystery was eh, and the resolution was eh but it was nice listening to it, so I gave it three stars. Then the second book in the These Witches Don't Burn series came out. It's This Coven Won't Break by Isabel Sterling, of course, and I listened to the audiobook as soon as it came out. I loved it. This was a duology, so the story's over, but it was perfect. I have no complaints wonderful LGBT representation. We have a lesbian character. We have a bisexual character. I just loved everything about it. I really recommend this series. I'm not seeing it around as much as I would like to, but I loved 
the first book in the series. It was my favorite of 2020, 2021. Wait, no, 2019. What year are we talking about? It was my favorite of 2019. And this is among my favorites of 2020. I give it five stars. I loved it. It's witches. It's gay. It's YA, but it doesn't have the trope where the kids do everything and the adults don't do shit. But everyone was cooperating. So that was great. I really recommend it. Then I listened to the audiobook of Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This again is a YA contemporary about a girl who's still in the closet and she deals with some stuff. She's black and she has a white stepbrother. They have the sweetest relationship and I loved how Brandy Colbert described their dynamics. I just want to say that I want to read more of Brandy Colbert's books. I, I thought that it was very refreshing, like the way she talked about all the things that were in her book. She had schizophrenia, she had LGBT representation, she had a mixed interracial family. Everything that was in this book, I think it was dealt with very well. So I want to read more of her stuff. And I gave this book five stars. Also, I really recommend the audiobook because the narrator was good. Then I read The Deep by River Solomon. This is a very complicated book. Let's just say that it features non-binary mermaids. It was... As the title says, very deep. It goes very deep into ancestral pain and how black people are paying the price for what white people did to them. And it was very well written. I gave it four stars only because I think that, at least for me, at times the story became very hard to follow. Um, even the interior monologue, it was kind of getting hard to follow, at least for me. It doesn't reflect on the book itself, but on my personal, not enjoyment, but like the relationship that I had, I guess, with the book. Then, since a beautifully foolish endeavor, is that the title? I always have it wrong. But anyway, since the Hank Green's book was coming out, I had to reread my favorite book of 20. 19, which was an absolutely remarkable thing. So I listened to the audiobook the first time I read it. I re-listened to the audiobook the second time I read it because the narrator Kristen Sia is amazing. So I reread it and I loved it as much as the first time I read it, if not even more, because it's perfect. I have nothing to say. It's set in New York. It has kind of aliens, but it also has a huge, incredible, so poignant commentary on millennials, young generations, society as a whole, racism, there's LGBT representation, it's fucking perfect, <laughs> go read it if you haven't yet. Then I read Club When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Everyone and their mothers has read this book, so I'm not gonna tell you what it's about. Well, just a little bit. It's about two sisters. Their father dies in a plane crash, and that's how they find out that they're sisters, because one lives in New York and the other one lives in the Dominican Republic. And it's intense, it's beautiful, trigger warning for sexual assault, it has LGBT representation. The couple in this book was just the sweetest thing ever. I absolutely loved it. Five stars, it's a YA in verse. Even if you're not used to reading books in verse, like me, because I'm not used to, try. Just give it a try, because it's very easy to read, it flows so well, and you'll thank me for it. But I'm pretty sure you've read it already. Everyone has. Then I read The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. This is kind of set in the world of Elantris by Brandon Sanderson, of course. It's a novella, so it's a little bit shorter, especially if you're used to the length of Brandon Sanderson's books. I don't remember what it's about. I, I don't remember all the details of the magic system. Of course I don't, it's Brandon Sanderson. It was complicated as hell. But I remember that there was a woman kept captured and she had to do something, like create something using her m magic, like her special abilities or something. I don't remember, but it, I, I know that I loved it. I'm sure that I loved it. I remember loving it when I was reading it and I gave it five stars, so I was loving it. Then I read The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Musa Namid. I absolutely loved it and I gave it five stars. The funny thing is I had started reading this book when I went to visit my brother in New York two years ago now, because it's been two years. 
fuck time goes by fast. Um, I started reading it back then and I didn't finish it because I think I started something else. I I don't know, I don't remember what happened and I decided to get back to it once more. So I read it, I absolutely loved it, the writing was excellent. Part of it is set in Pakistan, in Lahore and part of it is set in Manhattan. The main protagonist is a man who is sitting at a bar and he starts talking with a stranger and he starts telling him about his life, about when he left Pakistan to move to New York to study and to work and that was around the time of 9-11 so of course it deals with terrorism and with immigration and the ending was just fantastic and I give it 5 stars. Have I said it already? I give it five stars. Then I listened to the audiobook of Under the Rainbow by Celia Lasky and this was kind of a disappointment. It's about a group of characters, a group of volunteers who move to the most homophobic little town in the US and their project is to stay there for a few years and try to change the perspective of the people who live in the town, try to make them less homophobic, try to engage with the community. The premise was kind of interesting, but it really felt flat. I wasn't really caring about any of the characters. It was a weird book, I give it three stars. It was okay, it was mm, like okay written, I guess, but it didn't have much going for it if that makes sense. Then, and we're in August, if anyone cares, I flew through volume 1, 2, and 3 of the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. What can I say, okay? I just want to say that Charlie and... wait for it, I know his name. I don't know his name. Charlie and Nick. Charlie and Nick are the cutest, okay? The cutest thing ever. And I love them. And these graphic novels, they manage to be so sweet and cute and just adorable. So adorable. But they also have, you know, homophobia and mental health issues. I think that comes up later, but it's also not really a spoiler. At some point, it also deals with eating disorders. So it has some darker topics and I think they're very well dealt with. But I mean, the biggest component was the adorableness of Nick and Charlie. That's what I'm saying. And this year, Heartstopper Volume 4 is coming out. I don't know when. Maybe this month, maybe next month. It's coming out at some point and I can't wait. Then I read You Brought Me the Ocean by Alex Sanchez. I read this graphic novel because Julie Marot was the one illustrating it and her art style is just breathtaking and it was in this graphic novel as well. But it was a graphic novel about a superhero, which is something that I didn't know about before going in. But even considering that, I didn't like how the story developed. I didn't have enough time to really get attached to the main character and then his personal struggle with his powers and then the daddy figure. It was just too fast and superficial maybe, like very on the surface. So I didn't like it, but the illustrations were beautiful. It features an interracial relationship. Let me correct myself. An interracial gay relationship and that part I really really liked because it was cute and adorable and very shy so th that was cute but all the rest wasn't so in the end I gave it three stars. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm pretty sure you know what this book is about. It's about two sisters, they're both black but as they grow up one decides to pretend that she is actually white because their skin is so light they can pass as white and so we see how their lives became more and more different from each other as they're going through different phases of their lives, one being black and the other one passing as white. And then we follow a sister's daughter 
and her relationship with a trans man. There were more characters, I think. Please don't hate me. I really have a terrible memory, but I really, really love this book. I really recommend it, and I really recommend the audiobook because the narrator was awesome. Of course, I don't remember her name because I have a terrible memory, but she was awesome, and I give it five stars. Then I read two Italian books. The first one was Appunti di Gia Fantastica. This was like a kids book but it was so cute because it was basically retelling the stories of little towns in my region and it was telling them in a way that you know they were like fantastic stories for kids and they were so humorous and and funny and pretty brilliant and I loved it I gave it five stars and then I read Ciò che inferno non è which has been translated into English wait and the title is What Hell Is Not by Alessandro D'Avenia I don't know if I've said it but it's by him this was amazing I gave it five stars it's based on a true story of a priest who was working priests work I guess he was working in a very rundown neighborhood in the suburbs of a Sicilian town. So of course he was dealing with mafia and he was trying to improve the conditions of the inhabitants of this neighborhood. I would really recommend it to everyone. The writing style is amazing, the story is amazing, is amazingly told. It's not stereotypical even though it's Italian and Sicilian and it deals with mafia, okay, but it was just brilliant. And I, of course, five stars. I really, really, really recommend it. Besides, I, I love Alessandro Devenia. He's a very good writer. Then I read a graphic novel called My Beijing. This is a collection of four stories that revolve around the relationship between a granddad and her nephew who can't walk. She can't move her legs. And it's a very, very sweet graphic novel, so tender. The colors and the drawings are just so so delicate and adorable and there was a story in particular one of the four that was called letters or something like that this is becoming a wrap-up i'm sorry this is too much um there are elements of magical realism in all the stories i think i gave it yes four stars then i listened to the audiobook of from scratch a memoir of love sicily and finding home by tembi Locke. five stars this was another favorite of the year it's the story of this actress, Tembi Locke, it's a memoir. It's the story of this actress who lost her husband to cancer. I think this happened 10 years ago. So she tells us about how they met, how they dealt with his illness, and particularly how she tried to not lose contact with his Sicilian roots, especially because they had a daughter together. It was such a beautiful story that really hit close to home because of the description of places and the mentality of people and the importance of family and roots and some bonds that they're so complicated but so strong that in some way nothing can really break them and it was just amazing of course i gave it five stars and there's a netflix adaptation series with zoe soldana if i'm not mistaken that is coming out at some point in the future so if you haven't read the book please do and please listen to the audiobook because of course it's Tembi Locke herself reading her story and telling her story and that was amazing. Then I read Cat's Cafe by Matt Tarpley. It's animals talking to each other and being there for each other and talking and tackling some tough topics like mental health and depression and social anxieties but in such a not lighthearted because that's almost a bad thing but like in a very open and kind and relatable way that lifts you up. I, I just love it. This is really another favorite of the year. Like this would be in my top five because it was amazingly done. And of course I give it five stars and I recommend you to go follow the artist on Instagram because it'll make your days better. Trust me. Then I read Alice from Dream to Dream by Giulio Macaione. This is an Italian artist who came out with this graphic novel first in English and then last year the same story was published in Italy as well. This is a retelling of Alice. I gave it four stars. The story was not the best. Giulio Macaione has done better, but the art is always just on point. It's beautiful, breathtaking. I love the shapes, I love the colors, I love it. Like if I had to say what my favorite 
art style is, when it comes to graphic novels, I would say Julia Macayone, like for sure. Then I listened to the audiobook of Verity by Colleen Hoover. This was a shit show. This was just, it was so terrible. I see three stars on Goodreads. I don't understand why. This is two stars at best. I love Colleen Hoover. I mean, I used to love her because I haven't read anything by her in a long time. I have many of her books in my bedroom, but this story was just, I feel like she was just going for shock value. And then she reached a point where it was like, this is too much. Let me just screw up with everything at the end so I can try to fix what I've done so far. If you have read the book, maybe you know what I'm talking about, but it was it was just a shit show. I'm sorry, just, uh, this is two stars. Then I read two graphic novel e-arcs that I got from Nagali. Was one, was one. <laughs> One was Meet Me by the Sea by Tal Tal Levy. I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't remember anything at all about this title, but I do know that it's for kids and I do know that I give it four stars, so I must have really enjoyed it and I think I really liked the art style, so there's that. And the other one is Gung Ho by Oh gosh, Benjamin von Eckhartsberg. I'm guessing it's he's German. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. I remember, I, I don't remember what the story was about. I remember that it was dystopian and nature had taken over and there were zombie-like creatures and gangs or something. The story was like, eh, okay. But the art style was so like particular and cinematic. In, in a way that just blew my mind. I have to check if the second volume came out or something. I, I, I should look into that. My back is hurting. <laughs> I haven't been doing this in some time. Then I read Together at Midnight by Jennifer Castle. This is a YA contemporary and it's the story of a girl and a guy who meet because they have mutual friends and then one day they witness a like not a car crash, but an accident with a person like goes to the hospital in very bad conditions. But they witnessed the accident and they witnessed the fight between this woman and her boyfriend or something who led to the accident and they didn't intervene. They kind of feel guilty about it. And so they decide to like make some good deeds before the end of the year. This is like a Christmas set story. I remember kind of liking it. The sister's brother was gay and I liked the representation. I didn't like, so there were some chapters from different perspectives of the people they were helping while doing these good deeds. All the perspectives were the same. They were written in a way as if like the same person was always talking and talking. The way of speech was the same and I didn't like that. So the ending was a bit predictable. Let's face it, we all know how it ends. Like even from just what I've told you, in the end I gave it three stars, but it was okay. Then, oh gosh, <laughs> nobody's gonna watch this. This is amazing. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Mystery of Alice by Lee Bacon. This was okay. I mean, I gave it two stars. It's because the main protagonist was very, oh gosh, she was so fucking childish. Halfway between middle grade and YA. It's about this young girl who gets accepted in a boarding school, whatever, very smart kids. And she goes there on a scholarship because of course it's for rich people and she's not rich. And then a classmate disappears and she tries to understand what happened to her. What was interesting to me was the fact that it was told through recordings, like the main character keeps a video diary kind of thing. So it's her recounting what happened and there are all the sounds effect, her being in a room and turning on the camera and finding the right spot for the camera. So like objects being moved and stuff. So it was very realistic in that sense. But the rest of the story, the mystery, whatever, it was not realistic at all. She was like, what, 13? It's like Pretty Little Liars, you know? Like if you liked Pretty Little Liars, I guess you would like this kind of story. You know what I mean. So I ended up giving it two stars, but the audiobook part was well done and it was what kept me going even if the story was shit. Then I listened to a great audiobook that I loved and it is Her Royal Highness. Rachel Hawkins. My lesbian heart is beating so fast right now. So it's about this girl called Millie. She's from somewhere in the south of the United States and she gets accepted into a high school in Scotland. And there she falls in love with her 
roommate who is a princess. The princess name is Flora and I did remember that I did not have to check. This was just adorable. The perfect enemies to lovers build up relationship developing however you want to call it. It was fucking perfect. There was a scene, I was listening to the audiobook and there was a scene where I, I was literally red, like tomato red in my face because it was so... There's nothing explicit in this book, but those two were dancing and my blood was hot, okay? It was amazing. I, just, I loved it. Please, I beg you, go listen to the audiobook because the narrator was amazing. She could pull off a Southern American accent. She could pull off a Scottish accent that was okay. In case it wasn't clear, this was five stars, but it could have been 10 stars. It could have been 20 stars. It could have been a hundred stars and, it, and it's still not enough. Then I reread The Revan Boys by Maggie Stivater. This is the first book in the Revan Cycle series, Quadrology, is that how it's called? I read this book for the first time ages ago when it was 17, maybe? And I liked it, but then I think I got to the third book and I just stopped reading the series. And I kind of did the same thing now because my plan was to reread, like re binge read the whole series. I read the first book, I loved it. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. I gave it five stars this time. I think the other time it would have been like four stars maybe. And then I started the second book with, you know, the intention of going forward. Do you think I did? Of course I didn't. I started the second book, maybe 10% in, I set it aside to start reading something else or something. I don't remember, but I still want to go back and and keep reading it, it just still needs to happen. Then I listened to the audiobook of The Guest List by Lucy Fowley. I really didn't like this story. It was supposed to be a mystery thriller thing where a soon-to-be bride, a bride, a soon-to-be wife, a bride. So basically there was this wedding being held in this very exclusive island with no access apart from like one single boat that goes back and forwards and stuff and nobody dies till the very end there's the, that's not even a spoiler is it because nobody dies till the end and it was supposed to be a mystery with a dead someone the story was boring as hell <laughs> I honestly don't know how people liked it, especially people who like mysteries. I don't know how they could keep reading this thing because it was predictable as hell. And I say that as a non-mystery reader because I usually don't read mysteries. So if it was boring and predictable to me, I can't even imagine. Anyway, I ended up giving it two stars and that's only because the narrator was pulling off a pretty good Scottish accent, which is honestly what kept me going. Can you see the trend of the Scottish accents here? It was boring. That's all I gotta say. Then I listened to another Aussie book and it was Graceling by Kristen Cashore. I really liked, again, the narrator. It was one of those old men's voices, like, you know, Gandalf or Dumbledore telling you a fantasy story of epic adventures and tales and stuff like that of medieval princes and princesses and guards and thieves and it had that kind of vibe going for it that I I loved because I'm a sucker for that. I was intrigued by the magic system but then it got so repetitive like for two-thirds of the book nothing nothing Nothing, literally nothing happens. You have these two, three people traveling to go somewhere and along the way, nothing happens. And they're on this journey for a long time, for two thirds of the book and nothing happens apart from traveling and facing the cold of the winter and hiking up mountains and I don't know, like apart these kinds of things, nothing kept the story going. So it really dragged on for a long time. I don't think I'm going to continue with the series. I mean, I gave it 3.5 stars. Since the books in the series have different main characters, I don't have anything to keep me going. I don't know. Last three, third to last book I read is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. The first time I read this book again, it was ages ago. Like I was 18, 17. It was when, you know, the book was really going. Like everyone was recommending it for Christmas. I mean, everyone always recommends it every year for Christmas, but there was specifically one year where 
everyone was talking about this book, it was everywhere. So it must have been ages ago, literally. And last year, the TV show was coming out and I really wanted to watch it, but I didn't remember much about the book. And I really wanted to reread it for nostalgic reasons. <laughs> So I reread it and I actually enjoyed it more the second time around. I liked more how the relationship developed. I loved, loved Dash's sarcastic, smart ass tone. In the end, I didn't watch the TV show, so I might have to read the book this year when Christmas comes around and then watch the TV show. Who knows? It was a bliss. It was very nice. After Christmas, I read This Winter by Alice Oseman. This is a prequel in the Solitaire series, according to Goodreads, but it's like a novella in the Nick and Charlie's world, I guess. So I'm talking about the Heartstopper world. And this is a very short novella that is set on Christmas Day, I think, or it starts on the day before Christmas and then it continues on Christmas Day. And it's a very hard Christmas because Charlie has been suffering from eating disorders and he came back home for Christmas and he's having a hard time with the family of course who doesn't really know how to deal with his eating disorder. There is Nick as well and his sister Tori is a piece of work but I like her. So it was okay, I gave it three stars. I liked that there were illustrations as well as text. I, it was weird, maybe I was expecting something I don't know, a little bit more because I loved the Heartstopper series so much. It was okay, I gave it three stars. Last but not least, if you paid attention during this video, you know what's coming. The last book I read, Scratch, listened to in 2020 was A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. I loved book. I loved this book so so much and it was a struggle at first. It's actually a funny story because back when I reread the first book in the series, I did that so that I could immediately start the audiobook of the second book in the series. I started the audiobook but I couldn't get through it because that's not really a spoiler but let's just say that there are more narrators in the second book. So I wasn't used to the voices. I was kind of missing Kristen C's narrating voice because it was just perfect, absolutely perfect for April, May. So then I stopped listening to the audiobook and I started reading the physical book. I got the physical book and I started reading it. But it wasn't working for me because I was used to April May narrating the story. But something in me was just telling me that I couldn't let the year end without reading the sequel to my favorite book of the previous year, of 2019. So I picked it up again. And of course, a mess happened and I had problems with the video that I had filmed with the footage and stuff. So we'll just keep going as if nothing happened and we'll take this opportunity to also talk about a few more books that I forgot to talk about in the first part, first long part of this video. But first, let's go back to A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. Let's just say that I went back to the audiobook, I listened to it, I devoured it in just a few days before the year ended and it was incredible. It had everything. It had romance, it had action, it had humor, it had social commentary, the one that Hank Green had gotten us used to in the first book. It was perfect, I loved it, a perfect ending conclusion to the duology and this is one of my favorite series slash books of all time because they're just incredible and if you hate sci-fi like I do because I don't really like sci-fi, just give these books a chance either way because they're amazing and you'll love them, I promise. Going back in time to the books that I forgot. <laughs> To mention. The first one is an Italian book and the title is La Scatola di Cuoio by Gianni Spinelli. This is written by an author that comes from my same region and that was kind of drove me to read this book. It is set in the 50s and it's basically a story about a priest 
who dies and then the family who is supposed to inherit all his fortune finds out that maybe he wasn't as devout and as good a priest as anyone thought or maybe there were already some rumors going on about him so it deals with corruption and also immorality within the church particularly in small towns and particularly in the south of Italy. It wasn't perfect but I felt that it represented my area and my specific culture very well so I gave it four stars. Another one is Kishat by Salman Rushdie. I'm not gonna go into detail about this one because it was a fucked up mind trip and it was so long i listened to the audiobook it was so so fucking long but in the end i gave it three stars because there were so many things going on and it just felt kind of boring by the end but it had a great social commentary and like a commentary on society and religion and culture and all that stuff you can tell that someone Rushdie is an intellectual he's an incredibly intelligent and knowledgeable person and that is very admirable but the book itself it had flaws and I gave it three stars. Next two books I'm going to talk about I am ashamed that I forgot to talk about these two because they were incredible they were amazing and I loved them so so much especially one of them is like one of my favorite books of all times <laughs> and it is We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib and this is a queer memoir about Samra Habib. She is an Ahmadi Muslim and she moved from Palestine to Canada where she rebuilt her life. She worked on her queer identity and she found basically her community after so many struggles. In this book, she talks about her childhood and the traumas that she had to live through. She was sexually assaulted and then she got married at a I think or even 16 when she was still in high school when she was already living in Canada and she had to come to terms with her religion and what she thinks of that and there was just so much going on I absolutely loved it it was so well written the audiobook is read by her and it was amazing and I loved every second of it and I really really recommend it and I can't believe I had forgotten it I think that's because I thought I had read it in 2019 because last year my concept of time went got fucked up so bad. <laughs> so it's not really my fault, is it? The other one I'm going to leave it for last because I kind of want to end this wrap up on a good note and the other book that I have forgotten wasn't really my favorite and it is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. She is the author behind Sarah Scribbles which is a series of comics that I really enjoyed because I thought that they were funny and lighthearted and just relatable and cute to read and to look at and just to flip through. Fangs was a bit of a disappointment. It's basically a collection of comics that portray the relationship between a vampire and a werewolf and she basically tackles all these stereotypes and jokes that you could think of when you hear a werewolf and a vampire are in a relationship. And yes, there were some comics that were kind of funny, but mostly they just left me, I don't know, like, okay, but they weren't particularly funny. So I don't, I don't know. And it was so short that I'm like, am I really buying a book just to read these comics because I don't think it's really worth it. So in the end, I gave it two stars, but I do know that some of the readers liked it. So, and let me end this year wrap up with Run by Cody Keplinger. This is a YA contemporary about the friendship between two girls, Bo and Agnes. Agnes is legally blind and she lives a very shelved life because her parents have set out so many rules because they believe these rules might help her lead a more normal life and she doesn't really complain, she follows these rules, she does whatever her parents tell her to do until she befriends Bo, who comes from a family that has a very bad reputation. Her mom is an alcoholic and she basically looks out for herself, she has to take care of herself and she befriends Agnes, they become really good friends even though nobody believes that this friendship is actually genuine and healthy for both girls. And then one night Bo goes to Agnes's house and asks her to leave, to run away with her because something happened. And so Agnes 
is there for her, they steal the car and they run away and they try to make out a plan to where they're going next. So part of the book is set in the present and we see their running away plan unfolding and part of the book is set in the past and we get to see how they became friends and we get to find out more about their friendship and how it developed throughout time. Agnes is legally blind so we have that representation while Bo is bi. I really loved this book. I think that it's really underrated. I've never heard anybody talk about it or recommend it since I think it came out a few years ago, but I really adored it. The pacing was perfect, their friendship was real and true, and I loved how their characters were built and how they developed throughout the book, and I really loved it, and I gave it 5 stars. So this is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching it. It was long, I know. If you reached the end, um, thank you. Please leave a sunflower emoji or even a smile emoji if you're on the keyboard watching from your laptop or just listening while you're doing something else. It's totally valid and I get you. But thank you so so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you would like to. Let me know if you remember and if you don't have a memory that is as terrible as mine. What your favorite books of um, 2020 were. Again, thank you so so much and I'll see you very soon with another video. Warm hugs!